Right, welcome back. Um, I'm just about to start the next lot. And now, if you're looking at this uh, now, you're probably thinking, well, actually, that doesn't look like it's changed colour at all. But when you look at the original colour of this um, this paw, which I've got a piece, I've got a head here that's actually covered in cat hairs. But anyway, not to worry about that. You can see the difference. Well, I hope you can see the difference in the colour. It's very subtle. Um, there's a little bit more depth to it. This looks very, very flat compared to this. Um, and it's just even just after one coat of a, an undertone blush, uh, you can see that it's it's actually starting to look a little bit more lifelike, more, more alive. I would hope so anyway. I can't actually see what you're seeing, so I'm just um, hoping that that's the case. Now, I've not, I've not, it's about a week since I've did this first layer uh, and it's got <laughs> even though I don't like allow the cats in here they do actually get in and walk around they like to go on the windowsill they, they don't mess with the dolls but they like to go on the windowsill so I've actually got a few cat hairs on it but not to worry so what I'm going to do because I've been um, it's been a week since I've messed with this I'm going to actually um, if I had a spray you know, if I was intelligent, I would have a spray with um, some of the Bob Ross thinner in, but I, I'm not, and so I don't. So I'm basically just going to um, trickle it over the surface of the doll. Now, don't do this with no box because no box is far too expensive to be to be doing things like this. So I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to use uh, sometimes when I dab things off or wipe them down, I'm using a kind of swab thing. It's actually a surgical swab. It's, it's a swab that they use in in uh, hospitals and that. So it's it's no there's no um, it doesn't leave um, fluff bits of fluff or all into anything. Um, I'll actually put it into the um, the list of things. You don't have to get it. It's just something that I use um, quite a bit um, for sort of wiping down things like that because it doesn't leave any lint so basically I've soaked it with um, with solvent now I think I mentioned before the different things that solvent the, the effects that different different products have on silicon you'd imagine because it's almost like a rubber that uh, nothing would soak in and I thought when people used to talk about opening the pores and things I used to think how ridiculous uh, it's rubber, you know, not, nothing soaks into rubber, uh, silicon rubber, but it does. So what we're going to do at some point is do a little experiment. I'll show you what effect different, different liquids have on silicon rubber. When you say silicon rubber, we don't mean latex, we mean silicon rubber is the, um, the type of product it is, like, like, um, it's, you're not saying you know plastic wood or anything like that. Rubber is the product as it is. It's just made out of silicon. Uh, all those latex rubber, obviously, is uh, what people think of as being rubber. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do at some point is a little experiment where I put um, different liquids into little dishes, and I'll leave different some pieces of um, silicon to soak in it and you'll be able to see the difference it makes basically what happens is acetone has no effect at all water has no effect at all but solvent that we use to mix our paints with it um it it absorbs it into the silicon and makes it all spongy and expands it's really really interesting but it's useful to know for when you're painting because obviously the solvent that you use to mix your paints is going to have an effect on the surface so it basically um, when it hits the surface it starts to kind of soften and then it takes the new layer of paint in and then it all hardens up and cures uh, that's how I imagine it happens anyway uh, I could be talking rubbish but bearing in mind that it does actually um, absorb solvent it's it's a I think it's a fair assumption that that's what happens Right, so we're going to continue with our Psycho Paint as our paint base. So I'm just going to use A and B. I probably need to decant some more into this. 
So today we're going to do um, some blue undertones and then some blue veining as well. Um, blue, if anyone's done reborning, you know that blue you use in in very, very tiny amounts uh, because it stains and it can very easily look like bruising. You can easily put too much in. Um, so, excuse me, having a slurp on my drink. The first thing we're going to do is do some undertones. Now, I've done a diagram which I've put in the, in the notes of where we're going to work. So these are basically the areas we're going to work on. Um, we're only doing the back today, so I'm going to be working on the back of the neck, the, the small of the back, down the spine, the either side of the shoulder blades. Um, the areas that we do the most are the areas where the skin is thin, thinnest. So if it's quite fleshy, like you know the, the sides of the back, muscly and fleshy, the thighs and that we don't, unless it's got veins in it. Um, and the areas that we do more blue are the where the where you would see veining areas on your leg, on your foot, on your arm. So we're going to go for that. Um, so they're the they're the areas we're going to be we're going to be um, mostly doing. Uh, so I've I've put the I've put A and B in. I'm not going to measure it out now. You've seen me measure it. You know approximately how how thick to do it. Um, Bob Ross thinner. I'm just using straight Bob Ross thinner. I'm not using Novox or anything expensive. Um, always put the cap on afterwards because it, it does evaporate. And even though only a bit of air can get in through the hole, you know, it just it's just a waste. Now I'm not wearing um, a mask at the moment, um, and I'm not wearing gloves, but I think it's recommended that you do. So, um, you know, do as I say, not necessarily as I do. I probably will put gloves on, actually. Got a bit of a cat hair in there. Right, so I'm just going to uh, put a tiny bit of blue in, maybe a couple of drops. I'll just, I'll just do one drop to start with to see what it looks like. Yeah, that's all I'm going to do. Actually, I'm just going to do one drop. So you really don't want it any any darker than that at this stage. Sticks are great for um, mixing, but if you really, really want to mix it in. Well, at the end, you're better with a brush. Right. Okay, I'm going to use my trusty old sponge to start with for these areas. Oh, these areas here, the larger areas. So I'm just going to get a sponge. To a, a smaller piece, right? Yep, something like that size. And I'm just going to pop it in the blue, and away I go down the spine, small of the back, back of the neck. You don't want any. You, want, you don't want it to look visible, basically. It's just an impression. So if you do too much like I just have, just pull it, pull it off with, with a dry sponge. With a... Just in the area where the veining shows the most. A little bit on the palm of the hand. Veining. It in the underarm bit, which we'll do more, more on the other side. Behind the ears. Right. 
legs, or the remaining will mostly go on the legs and then top of the foot because that's the bit that I can actually see. All right, okay. Now I might just add the odd, just random blob, just just for the heck of it, just to make it give it that depth. But generally, we're looking at down the back, top of the back. Arms where the veins will go, legs where the veins will go, behind the ears, neck, and at the bottom of the foot. If but our foot, our feet are actually face downwards, so I won't, I won't do that. I'll do that when we turn him over, hair over. Okay, so let's make sure that there are no obvious edges. More important with blue, with blue than anything because it's not a it's not a nice colour to try and get rid of. Okay. Right, I'm going to uh, full secure that for a few minutes, and then we're going to come back and do the veining. Right, okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add a tiny bit more blue. Just one more drop. And I'm going to just mix that in. I'm going to put that in very... Um, I'm going to put it on very carefully um, in the same areas, but um, just watch I don't overdo it. So again, down the back, smooth of the back, take out the excess with a, a plain sponge. Arms. Neck. Oh, inside of shoulder blades. So I'm just going to make sure that it's not too dark. It's pretty good, pretty good lighting in here today. So be careful if you're doing this at night time on, on uh, daylight bulbs. Um, if you can, always try and paint in daylight. Because it's amazing how different it can look. Even if you're using the same colours as you would normally do, you think, oh right, it's okay, I know what colours I, I use. Um, you can you can go a bit um, bit wrong, let's call it. Right, <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to add a teeny bit more blue and we're going to do the, um, the veining. I'm not going to do a lot of veining, just add one more drop. Um, I'm not going to do a lot of veining. Um, I do like a little bit of veining. Um, I think I might have said this before, but I'm going to say it now anyway. Um, if you actually look at a newborn baby, apart from the very, very preemie, preemie babies, you don't really see a lot of veining on them. Um, people, it's one of those tricks of the eye that people see your doll. They see lots, they see the veins and they go, oh, that's so realistic, look at those veins. But actually what they don't realise is actually, you know, it's not realistic because babies don't have a lot of veins showing, as I say, unless they're very premature. So, um, but we are going to add some because as I say, it does, it does add to the realism of the baby, even if it's not realistic. So I'm going to use a fairly fine brush. 
not desperately fine but just a little bit fine I'm going to load the brush with some and we're going to do veining in the areas that I've got on my diagram when we do veins we just do squiggly lines basically doesn't 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 you can have like breaks in it you can go back you can add a little bit of color in different parts of it and then you can uh, tidy it up with a, a dry brush if you can see what I'm doing there it should be literally barely there you shouldn't really be able to see a line you certainly shouldn't be able to see the brush stroke yeah don't do what I just did with the tweezers in other words have some, some pigment on them and go and um, blob pigment all over the back of your, your, your baby again so we want I, I usually just do one vein down the back on one side so you can use your sponge as well to blob up color and then you can have like say one section of the vein a little bit more color in it than others because veins do go closer to the surface and further away from the surface they don't stay exactly the same place all the way down the vein these are quite handy little things to have applicators I'm going to be using I'm going to be using them later for a little bit later for mottling uh, or at least the bigger ones of them uh, but they're really good for for just dabbing up things just getting detail You can you can literally barely see that little vein going down, squiggly little vein. So I usually do it and then I tidy up the edges and the shape of it. Veins aren't just, you know. Um, when you see a vein, have a look at veins on your on your arm, see how they go. Um, very often, there's there's like the mark, and then there's a shadow around it. So if you do the vein, and then there's some blue around it, that's fine. Obviously, you don't have to do veining. the whole of that arm um, off camera didn't I so the veins um, divide further away from the heart they go so so they're going to go down the arm and then they can fork a few times there are set ways of set places that veins are actually um, I don't actually know what they are so as I say it's just an impression it's just it's just um, an illusion uh, coming down up, up the uh, head. The most important vein, if you're doing veins, is the uh, the temporal veins. Um, they can look very effective. These are very um, 
not obvious at all. In fact, sometimes it's just literally a blue blur. So the, the diagram where it shows a very dark line is, is very, very misleading. We're not we're really not doing that. Right. Okay. Um, that's what I'm doing on this side on, in the way of blue uh, undertones and veining. Uh, I'll be doing a bit more on the other side on the front of the baby but that's what I'm doing on the back. I'm going to cure this now. Okay. <laughs> 